Hello, hello, everybody. Uh, it's been a minute, <laughs> and by minute, I mean last week, which is, I guess, I'm still in uh, full-blown uh, <laughs> disillusionment since I haven't done it for, uh, you know, videos repeatedly for a while now, and I'm doing uh, this week's episode based on some uh, clamor from the last week's episode talking about uh, Ushran list for Flesh Eater Court, uh, and that's what we're going to basically cover today. We're going to cover three archetypes, I'm going to try to go uh, do this as... Uh, uh, fast as possible, without uh, <laughs> losing too much context and useful information, since there's three lists effectively we're going to view. Um, but, you know, for the most part, this theme today is around Ushran in those three lists. And the three archetypes are going to be around Monster Mash, Gristle Gore, Knights, Hollow Morn, and then Serfs, uh, which is Morrigan. So those three different lists, you know, and how you can approach Ushron uh, into how he fits the fits these all together. Now, granted, by no means are these lists going to be. Uh, I have not experimented with all of them. I have conceptualized them. Uh, you know, I'm putting that caveat out there. I, I would like to run some of them and get some practice games and some even you know small events with them, but for the most part, I have no. Um, no, you know, experience playing Ushron in an event with him. I just, from what I think about him, uh, this is what I would come up with. Now, um, you probably, I'll point out that uh, there is, I posted a long thread on Twitter regarding what I think of Ushron outside of the concept of these lists, just, you know, in a vacuum. Uh, what does he do and so forth? Uh, you know, I'll, you know, do a small recap here real quick. I personally don't think, you know, God models uh, or big effectively any in model investment, single model investment that's almost like 25% or more than your entire army uh, isn't necessarily uh, a way it's, it's a liability. It becomes a liability effectively at certain like tier level of gamemanship, uh, mostly because it's a single model. It has a, a, you know, that's a weakness in itself and it has effectively, it's a lot of point resources into uh, something that can't be everywhere, <laughs> in a sense. Uh, unless they decide to bring a god model that can literally be everywhere. Looking at you, Yandrasta, for, for, from 40k. <laughs> and uh, no, there's just like, it's fundamentally like it's what it is. It's just that a tournament, at a certain tier level, these become a liability more than they help. So the only way to overcome that liability is by having some powerful synergy through either the archetype of what you're playing or the allegiance mechanic. Like, in a sense, uh, I think I've used that term before, but like anything that en enables you to cheat more with uh, your sub allegiance or your allegiance mechanics is incredibly valuable. So the question is, is it worth the point investment that you know Ushram brings to the table? And you you'll see that uh, throughout the effectively as we go through all the different lists, I'll explain uh, where I think Ushram fits the best and where he doesn't fit as much. And we're gonna go, with that. We're gonna go jump straight into where he fits the best immediately. Uh, mostly because I don't want to make this an hour-long video, <laughs> if I can avoid to. <laughs> Let's go into uh, Sublime. Okay, perfect. So we're going to start with the Monster Mash list, with the Gristle Gore list first. Uh, and the reason why he fits the best in here, and I'll explain some of the synergy of why, but also because he himself is a monster, so that helps pretty greatly. Um, the reason why uh, he also has, where his mechanics really fit well with uh, Gristle Gore mechanic is how the Gristle Gore sub allegiance works. For those who don't know, the sub allegiance Gristle Gore uh, uh, mechanic lets effectively a monster that is Gristle Gore, so not Ushran since he's Hollow Morn locked, uh, basically get to fight first during the combat phase. So, what that pairs very well with Ushran's strike last mechanic. So, Ushran is a, you know, a three inch aura reducing bravery by one every combat phase. And he also has one inch aura that basically is a is a battle a bravery check. And if those units fail, they strike last. So you can kind of see like how that works, right? Because in a monster mash list, some of the biggest weaknesses of the army is basically being able in a situation to bring as much power, get to fight as with as many things as possible before your opponent gets to punch you back. Because that's like how you overcome some of like the durability issues maybe the list has. You know, look at you know, uh, you know, basically Iron Jaws with the Blood Tooth list. You know, trying to a trigger a Smash and Bash. You know, very quickly to make sure they get to fight with everything they possibly can consistently. Uh, look at Beast Claw Raiders. They they do it. You know, not quite as good as that because they don't really have that mechanic, but they do have some tricks like the one of their mount trait lets effectively stuff in an AOE strike last. 
But most importantly, they have a lot of upfront value from the mortal wound charge mechanic, which gives them that additional uh, kind, of, kind of oomph before they get really into the nitty gritty of the activation war, you know, effectively fighting between each other. So Ushon, just mechanically speaking, fits very well with that. You have a really good melee beat stick that provides you effectively this AOE strike last mechanic, where basically you get to see how the bravery resolves, rolls resolve first, and then you get to pick something to strike first. So obviously in that case, let's say Ushron is supported by one of your one or two of your monsters effectively in a combat or and you get to see everything that in combat of Ushron is effectively striking last, then you can activate where a monster isn't fighting something that is striking last, and that get you get to track strike first on that. And then you get to activate with another monster, maybe who's not even in this or, or in this in these fights at all. Before this is all happening before effectively your your opponents is basically being able to project power or hit you back during this activations. So you can think of it as like in reverse, it's kind of like giving your entire army strike first, uh, you know, with some conditional conditionality and obviously lots of movement, shenan you know, shenanigans, I guess, agency, you know, making those charges of Usheron, get him to get his most value, uh, getting the Grim Garland support, you know, I think the Ghoul King on Zombie Dragon and Usheron play very well together because of that, because the Ghoul King can give uh, the minus two aura, then he can affect one unit with his monster sacks on a three up to be a minus two bravery, and then Ushron triggers with another one, and then if he's within one inch of that unit, now all of a sudden they're taking a bravery test and negative five. Uh, for strike last and now you're guaranteed like those two your general and Ushron do not need any help <laughs> if they're fighting one thing effectively but the other monsters now are like you're, you're kind of hedging your bet a little bit differently you get to fight with those two uh before anything else triggers uh so in that in that regard that's why the gristle gore plus Ushron is very powerful uh, it, it plays well with that synergy he also does, you know, his whole 24 inch feeding frenzy also plays really well with the fact that you're kind of a decentralized threat army and you don't really want to babysit all your monsters with effectively feeding frenzy from your, you know, your one or two abhorrent models. So that even, you know, once again, getting more value, get more efficiency out of it and his other additional delusion. Uh, you know, you're still probably looking at plus one save for the most part for all your stuff because that's still very good. But then, you know, Ushron still gives you the plus one inch to run and charge, which, you know, in the, you know, unlike some of the other newer units they got at in the book with, you know, the Crypt Guards and more Morbeg Knights, that's really nice to have as well. So once again, Ushron getting, giving you value, uh, you know, all through his War Scroll uh, before you even take into face value of his, you know, his durability, his punchiness and so forth and so forth. So he just kind of fits well inside uh, Gristle Gore. Now, in terms of, uh, in this list, I'll do something I haven't done. These lists, I've been doing, doing something I haven't done so uh, and many others. I'm going to quote some like alternative builds in, in a sense that can give some value. Another piece of tech that I really like in the Gristle Gore list uh, is effectively uh, the um oh my god i'm having mental block now <laughs> to do this uh it's the horror gas sorry there we go horror gas very powerful tool at your disposal in this type of list you're not looking to get you're never going to really be punished by your bravery mechanic uh, it's you project uh effectively uh you know preventing inspiring presence mechanics obviously it doesn't get get around you know obr and um the mechanic or the uh indomitable uh at least the throne can get around obr but not indomitable but what it does do is it gives you that projected no inspiring presence mechanic on top of which you're playing an army that has a bunch of bravery debuffs <laughs> so uh and that hits pretty hard so all, overall it's like you're getting maximum value uh, both in terms of shooting because most of your units have shooting you're gaining value in combat and then now you're getting even more potential value in battle shock phase so all in all, like the the horror gas seems like a pretty good addition to the to the list overall. Uh, and to get there from this build, you would have to drop you know one of your terror guys to twenty goals, and uh, that would effectively you give you the points, right? Because you'd go down a hundred. The horror gas is sixty, if I remember. That gives you a forty point, uh, basically swing in your triumph, which is good to have, not necessary. But thirsty is is valuable in this kind of list. But I don't necessarily think you absolutely need it. In terms of spell breakdown in the list, you're looking. I still think Crimson Victuals is really good because you don't have a lot of recursion. Because uh, I sacrifice, there's no courtiers in this list. 
uh, and when you know it gives you some recursion for you maybe your beast flares because you're going to use them as screens or like you know battle tactic scores or even in a similar matchup as a monster ma matchup they're really good as a support unit for engagements you know you have superior you will have superior power against them they're removing their their uh monster section you know whatever we talked about beast Lair a lot they're fantastic so it just it gives you that plus it's, it gives you the ability in a matchup to fish for deeds at range with Ushron, uh without without actually doing any uh any combat right so because you're kind of always in a position to like the only model in this list that can get like really easy you know first you know six deeds very quickly is the cardinal because he can sit on the throne he can give a speech right so that's useful because you're trying to get to the six deeds for the master of the menagerie and provide many important models as you can because your recursion isn't your beast flares it's your monsters right so having the ability to you know respawn those monsters you know six wins taken seven inches hole even an edge and then nine inches away is also very nice now you'll notice there's no uh arc region for the extra spell to get the extra distance i would argue maybe it's worth it maybe not it depends how you want to fit the the list uh, like i said if you drop the uh, the second terror guys for 20 goals you can take an arc region over the cardinal but i really like um charnel conviction just be even if it's only like a five up ward save it's still really nice on someone like you know you know some of the monsters there maybe you're gonna fight things that are not going to be defended very well through the, your activation mechanics it's always nice to have you could always trade that that you know toronto conviction prayer to fight for summer king's favor if you're really trying to fish for more deeds very quickly on your born king on royal zombie dragon which we had talked about in the, in the twitter thread like there's a kind of opportunities you know there's multiple opportunities you're probably asking why i'm taking levitate on the royal diaborn gold king and Orzol zombie dragon it's nice to have levitate as an option for ushron giving him fly is pretty pretty cool it's also very useful in some matchups uh it's pretty you know you're not looking to push a lot of spells you'll you'll see zero deranged transformation because uh i don't think you know i don't think you need it in this list personally the venerated zombie dragon mount trade is incredibly good because it affects all your monsters including ushron for plus one hit aura um so i i don't think like that's why you probably take the zombie dragon over the terror guys on the character because you want the mount train uh more than the terror guys ones you still have access to in the general list you still have two royal terror guys which are pretty good at honestly just shooting heroes if you can get them in range of shooting and the grim garland trigger on them uh it's pretty consistently good at just basically moral winning them to death or just really anything uh but it's just it's just a really nice bonus to have uh, and they, you know, they're mortal wounds in combat, which is another really with high random, potentially high damage. So another reason why you want them. And then the zombie dragon as a backup reserve unit, you know, effectively because you can keep him in uh, reserve and then come down. And also because it, you know, it prevents inspiring presence. Another mechanic, like I said, that prevents inspiring presence. Have pretty decent shooting as well uh in terms of clearing chaff more than it is for clearing, uh, you know, single characters. But it's not like the worst, but it's okay. In all in all, like it's just like that's why I feel like the horror gas kind of fits in the list, but I don't know if it's sacrificing a second terror guys is is super important. Um you could technically sacrifice 10 royal beast flares, but then I think your battle tactic path is a bit more challenging uh, because you don't have as easy of a, a surround option unless you start using monsters to do it. But I feel like you're trying to prevent that from overextending your monster. I think you're just trying to get either to the edges of things or just ram them down the center. They the list overall, like, is you know. It's fun for sure. <laughs> I can tell you that right now. Uh, it's good because it has multi activation, uh, effectively damage output. It has also like um, recursion, which is something like you look at Iron Jaws and Blood Tooth and then Beast Claw Raiders. Like one of the biggest problems those two books have right now is the lack of recursion. They just don't have any. And this book does, right? So once again, uh it is very powerful i'm going to make an assumption here a caveat that the master of the menagerie command trait does not require the general to be alive to go off based on the way it's worded but i'm not willing to put any money down uh on that it was not part of the fact i'm assuming they intended it to just work even if, even if the guy is dead but just in case it's required as uh to be taken uh, uh and be alive i'd probably swap it to the cardinal the reason why I give it to the Ghoul King on Terror and Zombie Dragon instead of the Ghoul, the Cardinal is mostly because 
for unlocking reprisals, maybe in the later games, like just having the ability to, if he's dead, then you have access to reprisal, which is also very nice for a battle tactic option. Not that you will struggle that much with battle tactics with this, because Intimidate is very easy if it's a non, you know, a, a, no, a mission that has no man's land. Uh, Surround Destroy is also very easy with the Beast Flares. Uh, well, I say I should say it is doable with Beast Flares. Uh, I would I would probably think you'd have to end up doing using one of your fast units, aka Zombie Dragon on one flank and then auto running the other, uh, the Beast Flare in the other corner to get it. But for the most part, like the list plays well. It doesn't look like it would, but it plays well. It's it's fun, and I don't think it's necessarily going to be the best flesh shooter court list, but it does counter some things in the game pretty pretty harsh. Like since it's such an uh, you know a proactive unit, you worst case scenario like you have run and charge uh, a spell on the Aborn Ghoul King for, and that's very powerful uh, if you're trying to just basically really put that pressure in early. But you know you're more looking at like a turn two like engagement structure, right? And then you can really bring in like everything into somebody, and then clear chaff through shooting and then or even some support heroes in the back depending on your terror guys rules go and then you get to fight your entire your all your monsters typically before your opponent gets to even swing right so all of those things in combination is just like you can kind of land like a very aggressive punch in the face uh very quickly now of course you know if you're playing in a mirror and your opponent has beast flares you're gonna be sad <laughs> so you're gonna spend more time trying to shoot them out of the off the table than <laughs> than anything else because you don't want to get any you know stuck in engagement with them. But overall, the list uh, should be good. And I I uh, I would say if you can ask me what's the probably winning record for this list at a GT, I'd probably say three two four one with the right level of matchups and expertise. Now for Ivo seems kind of a stretch, uh, but that's just you know any list that's kind of gimmicky always has kind of a stretch uh, in terms of like a five zero situation. We're going to jump straight into the uh, Knights next, uh, the Knight version of Ushron's list. So keep context repeating. This Gristle Gore, I think, is the list that benefits the most from Ushron. Knights is the second list that benefits the most from Ushron uh, for very similar reasons, right? Uh, the the uh, mechanic of Ushron, basically, of the strike last, the additional delusion, uh, and the fact that he's kind of a beat stick, he's also a good platform for the ranch transformation for knights as a caster. Like overall, he's just really good. Now you'll notice one major distinction. Once you gravitate away from Grisogor to knights and surf armies, you start actually caring about mustering, you know, basically bringing back models into your units. It's less about bringing back units, but more about bringing models into them. So from in that regard, like, Ushron, since he doesn't play into the recursion benefit whatsoever, he starts diminishing in like effectively efficiency for his points because you are he's not giving you the recursion cheat you're looking to get effectively. Uh, so in that regard, that's why in a night list, while he's still very good, he is not quite as good as Gristlegore because the Gristlegore list doesn't care about mustering; it cares about just abhorrence bringing back monsters on the table. Uh, and then anything that kind of, you know, benefits their healing mechanic, which right now, like, you know, none of the courtiers effectively can muster a, you know, a, a monster back to full health, right? You're at best going to be a priest might cast heal if you're taking it, or you do the uh, blessed this meal prayer, which is an also good one to generate, you know, heal. Uh, you know, there's, you know, also the, the chalice can technically heal monsters as well instead of bringing back uh, models. So in that regard, like Usheron doesn't play like all of the recursion that Gristlegore wants isn't really tied to Usheron or any other leader archetype in a sense, right? Uh, I guess if that makes any translates anyway. In the night list, it's becoming like now I need more investment in Master. I need more investment in recursion to the point where we get to the the surf list. It's the you know I really I am playing the recursion mechanic. So Usheron's entire other, you know, uh, powers are still good, but really not as valuable. So this is why the Night List is the second list that gets the most value. Holomorn, uh, for those who don't know, is a sub-faction that gives uh, plus one damage to Knights, uh, not their mounts, if they made a charge move. So that affects all the horrors. Uh, Usheron is... Uh, is um sorry is a holomorn knock char character or holomorn tag character so he technically is not self action but he provide he gets nothing from it uh so, yeah, and so don't worry too much about that point of context i also take gourmet who's also holomorn still doesn't get any value out of it but 
He's just because Gourmet does the thing that the zombie dragon, the Gold King on the zombie dragon does, which just gives you that run and charge potential. Uh, which really, when you're playing the non-surf list, you're looking for reach because you're you're kind of on a clock, or you're trying to you're trying to force your opponent into a clock. Uh, think about uh, Fast Sheet Accord as effectively a race against time, right? When you're playing uh, Gristle Gore, you're very gonna you're gonna put them on their clock very fast. If you're playing in the Knights list, you need to do uh, while you're more resilient because you have more recursion or you can stick to the board faster, you're still not quite as much as Surf, so you need to start their clock faster. And then in Surfs, you might as almost in a situation not even care about their clock because you're you're basically giving them a problem they have to solve, like the zombie list does for Soul Blight, which is can you chew through all of this uh, by the end of the game of you know and not drop any points on the table? So in that regard, like the all three armies address kind of tackle their opponents very differently. Gristle Gore is all about you know just beating you down. Knights are about beating you down and have some recursion. Surfs are all about like. Well, we have some beat down, but really, we're really good at recurring. Um, so these are kind of like the three archetypes as you follow down. Uh, so sorry, I was talking about Cormain. You see an arc region now with Horfrost because Horfrost is really good for horrors, <laughs> and also because he's recursion. Like he brings back a knight every turn or three serfs uh, on top of you know bringing back a unit himself through uh, deed mechanics. Then you got the courtier, the Vargolf courtier. Now I only have one courtier in this list. Uh, because, uh, honestly, it's because Ushran's in the list. <laughs> uh, the points are getting a little too tight for, like, multiple courtiers. Uh, you could argue you could bring down Gourmet, remove Gourmet, but I think the argument is the value he gives from a uh, the run and charge and the, maybe the other benefits is too good to not take, so he's going to, you know, stick around in the list. Uh, but the Vargo of Courtier is good enough, right? He's your general. He has cool Taskmaster. He doubles the recur the muster ability uh, effectively. And that means for every deed, and he brings back a knight instead of every two deed. Uh, he has the charnel vestment, which is the prayer for the five up ward, because you're gonna probably want to push that either on your screen or the big knight of horrors, or the big unit of horrors. And then you're looking at nine cryptors. Fantastic, very tanky, very, you know, puffy, and hits pretty decently hard uh, with that, you know, with Feeding Frenzy, with Fushan supporting him. And, you know, if you get a Horfrost off on them, they're basically, uh, you know, one of the best units, like the, you know, for point for point that, like, basically Flesh of the Board has outside maybe Beast Flares. And then six Crypt Whores, which are, once again, the second battle line option. Uh, you could probably split them into. Uh, two units of three, uh, but the only reason I kept them at six is because I want to make this list a two-drop list. And you'll notice a pattern here, all the effect lists I'm posting a two-drop. I we can talk about the merits of all the new, you know the new wizard finders and acolytes and so forth. But I think Felicia Accord is all about being low drop. It's not about trying to effectively get all these extra bonus. You you really do not like you and when you're a certain you know. You're right. Like all the other benefits, if in, in, in all the you know, if you're playing low to mid table to high table ranges, like the other benefits are probably just fine. But and when you're playing at the top table, like caliber players, drop priority becomes so so important uh, about dictating dictating and engagements, and and you do not want to give your opponents the ability to basically uh, get to your support character support pieces very quickly. Um, so, no, I I, I think uh, I think. To drop the low drop count to repeat myself again from last week is too important not to take. Then uh, the list is twenty crypt goals. You could trade for three horrors uh, instead. Of, instead, ooh, typo in there horrors. Uh, three horrors because you might want to push more towards the uh, indomitable triumph or bloodthirsty. If you bloodthirsty is not bad, I don't. I personally think indomitable. Once you start getting into the space of like having these multi model blocks, it looks better and better than just having a, an extra charge roll. Uh, or plus one to wound because the ranch transformation is already an option you have in the in the book. So the plus one to wound is kind of redundant at that point. But, you know, uh, I also like having 20 ghouls because it's a great backfield. It's also a great screen. Uh, there's also, there's just fantastic, you know, for a later game, if they die, you can break back 10. That's also so very nice. So in that regard, like, I there, there's no argument for, you know, basically trading the ghouls or crypt horrors unless you want to make a bigger play for triumphs. And then the chalice, because the chalice is still very good uh, in this list, even though you're not playing as much like recursion, just because the healing uh, is really powerful uh, for uh, m multiple reasons. You could also trade the the, tra the the chalice for effectively any other endless spell, honestly. 
uh, if you trade the chalice and the crypt ghouls with three horrors, you can it gives you some point adjustments to like take some bigger endless spells that you can take advantage of. But the chalice is you know incredibly and like it's just so effective at doing what it needs to do, which is effectively terror you know waste on one of your opponents to spell and getting rid of a cast to getting rid of it if you're not going to get any value out of it. Uh, it's also small enough to hide behind terrain. Uh, in most in you know some events you know they have like actual like big pieces so you know they can't even dispel it or you can hide behind wild woods unless you know the caster has like wind characteristic of 10 uh to dispel it and so forth and so forth it's just it's just a it's a good pocket spell to have for 50 points it doesn't get any better for fleck effectively uh and then you know two once again <laughs> you'll see two units of beast flares you know you want to keep those options alive for basically scoring surround uh they're once again in a great support unit be like if you're in a situation where you're playing let's say that gristle list your nine cryptors with like the 10 beast flares you know behind them is effectively you know very it now becomes a much harder challenge for your opponent to punch through right they're gonna have to dedicate shooting they might even have to dedicate some of the three range attacks or some long charges to get you know to them like they just fundamentally like they're just become such a nice support niche piece and what's you know like i repeat myself again but you know you still trying to pay for surround if you don't have any other better options uh on turn one right in this list i will say though it's more likely than not if you are playing an mission with uh, a no man's land that if you get six deeds on one of the character character in the throne you can you know because you get to see kind of that before between the throne activation and then the two heroic actions if you're going bottom of the turn you can do glorious feast if you basically maintain yourself uh pretty tightly on turn one right you can so gives you two options on missions that do that have a no man's land if there's no no man's land effectively territories are touching then you kind of have to play for surround as a backup option right uh or you can you know see if you know it's probably unlikely you'll see your opponent uh effectively deploy before you when two drop but if you do you can always keep the uh the uh the aborn rock region pretty far backwards for casting at least one spell for magical dominance Anyway, that's the night list. I uh, don't think I need to cover anything like bigger about this. I think night lists still do better about Ushron. <laughs> you know, for I I don't necessarily say Ushron need, is needed in a night list, uh, but it is if you want to take Ushron. This is kind of like the archetype I'm thinking about behind a night list. Um, you, st I think. Once again, one I'll pinpoint like I feel like when you play knights, like Gourmet's pretty valuable it's I, I hate the fact that he, his mechanic doesn't generate him indeed or that it's on a three up but it feels like a, a okay investment at that point he just doesn't feel great uh because he doesn't do anything else effectively but sometimes i feel like those crypt horrors need to reach uh potentially to uh basically put some armies in the back foot uh and or basically to have them defense you know defensively deploy more conservatively uh and and, and so forth and so forth so gourmet makes a lot of sense into that uh and but you know i i still think you could drop ushron and still have a, a just as good night list because you could add another arc regent uh so that brings you down to like let's see 310 points free and that's like that's a arguably another who there's a typo on the list i just noticed it didn't do that thank you uh, age of sigmar it doesn't do the points right <laughs> on the on the next to the unit block that should be a uh, 390 points uh, for nine crypt horrors, not 130 which is the base uh, unit cost but the points add up correctly at the end of the bottom uh and yeah so like for 310 points you're almost up to like another full nine man block of crypt horrors, right like or any you know bigger ghoul unit or you can at that point even invest in some crypt guard uh just to give like usheron uh you know a four up walking ward save or any of your characters like it, all in all like well, i guess we're dropped ushron so no <laughs> but like it would give you buzz for you all your characters um so in that regard like i don't know they ushron's not necessarily an absolute need in the night list uh and then we're going to transition into the list where he's actually never almost never needed uh and that's a surf list um once again, I just know I'll repeat. I noticed that the points on the side are a little wrong. Uh, makes it worse. The total points are correct, but the uh, uh, war score points are unfortunately the tier points. And I'll, I'll make sure the comment section of the video has the right points uh, in the in the listing, not the uh, not the uh, summarized like first war score purchase. Okay, let's talk about Morgan. Uh, man, we're already at a thirty minute mark. Uh, Morgan list specifically serfs 
once again uh you're looking at very wound dense right like or it's not wound dense lots of wounds 151 uh you're definitely uh playing for at this point you're engaged more into the recursion game plan less into the i'm gonna punch you really hard game plan not to say that serves don't hit hard they actually hit pretty hard but in this case we're like engaged into this archetype same crit you know you know two drop two units of 10 beast flares as you suspect we talked about the reasons why they're really good uh ushram the ranch transformation also very good uh, this time a marrow scroll herald versus uh uh vargolf because uh he's just easier to hide in this list and also uh, in morgan you're not dependent as much on output from your combat prowess to generate deeds since you can just sit on points and get them uh now the vargo generates these faster potentially but more risky to play with in this case the marable and Her marable scroll herald is a bit safer to play with and stickier since you can't you know as long as you don't let anybody get into him in melee he's kind of tanky then you got a cardinal for curse because you got lots of attacks <laughs> lots of ghouls uh not curse and the ghoul auto wounds don't trigger simultaneously but guess what like all right you think about it this way curse is effectively a mortal wound so it's an auto wound <laughs> so on top of an additional damage so of course you're going to take the curse result over the auto wound and in the worst case if you're doing using it for the crypt guard they don't even you know that gives them no mortal wound output so curse is very useful uh i didn't talk about this in the night list but the cardinal's base war scroll prayer is also very nice uh just mostly because uh, it's nice just you know preventing it lets you have ways to stop only shell redeploys it's not guaranteed but it's really powerful or in some cases all at defense which is another way of you know adding another uh ren mechanic as well as inspiring presence but it's not as consistent right every time they use it they that unit receives issues of command ability on a four up it next stops it's really powerful in matchups like with catacros <laughs> if you can get him within 18 inches of a catacros and just say every time his like his command abilities fail on a four up and it's pretty powerful uh but anyway that you're really taking for the access to the prayer in this case uh which is the uh cursed prayer and then you have uh one arc region Typically in a surf list, I'd feel a lot more comfortable having two arc region, but we're taking Ushron for this in this example. Uh, you could technically uh, get close to dropping uh, the Cardinal for another arc region if you want to play less into that curse support, uh, because you could drop the Crypt Ghouls to ten Crypt Guards, which gives you twenty points. Oh, never mind. Now we still need we still need uh, ten points somewhere else. But for the most part, like you 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 know once once again, Ushron doesn't play the recursion game. Um, and those, most of those other units don't need uh, as much support in terms of like raw power that Ushron provides uh, because you're playing more into like kind of like harder for your opponent to chew through all your units uh, through, honestly, again, a double potentially. Um, and you're playing more into the recursion. Uh, so not saying he doesn't work in Surf. I just don't think he gets as much value. And I arguably say that Surf list without Ushron get unlike the night list, which is kind of debatable. I think that the surf list don't need Ushron at all to perform well, but you know, this is where you're effectively going for, right? You're keeping the kind of consistent recursion mechanic. And then you just have Ushron there. It's basically what it comes down to. Um, and he doesn't like, he doesn't really play outside of just his straight, you know, solo power at that point uh, versus the other two lists, which he, he provides some like, incremental value props right well in gristle gory provides a lot in knights he provides a little bit from the from the feeding frenzy aura and then the fact that you know you can give the knights now defend you know plus one save while contesting an objective that you control and the run plus one and run and charge and then you have gourmet over there basically giving them the auto run and you know not sorry the run and charge uh mechanic uh so that way on auto six you're looking at you know whores go from like what is it a they get plus two inch to move with the range transformation plus one to wound. Then if you get whore fast, you either give them, you know, potentially threes or twos to hit or ran two or three. Uh, and then all of a sudden they're running of an additional dice uh, plus one, the dice roll, unless you make them auto run six. So, and then you finally get plus one to charge, which they don't have themselves. Uh, and, and they become like very, they have some big, big, big reach on the table. So in that regard, like, yes, like, you know, those things play a part into making your list better. Ushron in goals or surf list, he just gives you the delusion, really, 
the feeding frenzy aura is nice but it's like traditionally you're kind of like your characters you're playing more reactive and less aggressive because you're giving them your opponent so much of wound you know wounds to deal with that like you're not necessarily force you can just kind of loiter effectively you can just sit on points uh you don't really have to engage uh that hard like you're not required as much to hit it at least is my perception of how this would go but yeah I will, so to repeat for the, you know, people getting to the end of the video, especially if they fast forwarded to each section, uh, I will make sure the points listed on the comment section is correct. I'm sorry, the warmer app, when you export it, doesn't like to <laughs> give you the total point unit cost, but, you know, the, uh, the, the, the effectively the cost for each, you know, battle, pitch, pitch battle profile, uh, before you reinforce it. So I will make sure that's correct. And on the comments, the comment section. Uh, if you have any feedback or if you want to, you know, uh, get, tell me I'm totally wrong about this or whatever, just, you know, hit me up on Twitter, hit me up in the comment section of this video. I'm trying to my best to be proactive in answering people's comments. Uh, and don't worry, like, <laughs> I don't, I don't disagree that I might be wrong on all these assessments here because I'm not a, I love Ushron. I would probably run him in the night list or if I build a Gristle Gore list, I would definitely run him in the Gristle Gore list. He's just, he's kind of actually competitive in those, in the surf list that I'm enjoying playing right now. Not really. <laughs> so my opinion is very limited to that uh, narrow mindedness. Um, and with that, we're got 36 minutes. We're almost, wow. We're getting better at talking fast and making sure we cover all the points. I really appreciate your time and you coming and watching it. And please subscribe if you want to keep hearing me talk about AOS, which, you know, while I'm doing this very fast, I can talk for hours about it. So, you know, have a lovely week and I will see you next week.